David, welcome. Hi, Sarah. Now, Wang Yi, as we know, is a highly experienced, trusted figure of the Chinese government. So what is the significance of him coming to Australia today? I think the significance is the sign of further stabilisation. This is all part of establishing more normal ministerial dialogue, more normal visits. Uh, our Prime Minister was over in Beijing last year, the Foreign Minister here today, and later this year the Chinese Premier is due to visit. There were no big announcements coming out of today's meeting. I think Beijing is often reluctant to look too transactional here, come with a parcel of goodies, lifting trade sanctions and so on. All of that was discussed. The sharpest criticism from Australia, though, was in relation to Yang Hen Jun, the Australian citizen who's recently been sentenced, uh, received the death sentence, uh, set to be commuted after two years of good behaviour. But Penny Wong told her counterpart Australians were shocked about this. He would have been expecting all of that. He would have been expecting the, um, the list of concerns on the South China Sea and trade sanctions, Taiwan and so on. Um, but particularly on Yang Hen Jun, that message from Penny Wong also backed in uh, in his meeting uh, with Peter Dutton and Simon Birmingham uh, later this afternoon as well. A very clear position from Australia that this is not OK. Now, David, it's a clear position, but what we don't know is how he responded when that issue or any of the others are raised because... Today, there's no joint press conference between the two. Is that, is that unusual? Look, it's certainly been noted. I mean, Wang Yi does hold press conferences. He held one in China just a couple of weeks ago, but he decided not to appear alongside uh, Penny Wong today to answer even a few very orderly questions at a joint press conference, the sort of thing we're, we're quite familiar with uh, here in Canberra. Uh, Penny Wong went ahead with the press conference and, and did the, the three plus three, as it's called, three from each uh, side, the Chinese and Australian side. But no, we didn't get to hear Wang Yi's view of those issues around Yang Hen Jun or any of the other concerns raised today. Well, actually, so what questions were the Chinese uh, journalists asking of Penny Wong in that press conference? They were more focused not on Yang Hen Jun, but on the stabilisation in the relationship, the sort of language that Australia's been using around, and people would have heard this formulation that the uh, Albanese government has struck on, cooperate where we can, disagree where we must. And Penny Wong had a, a slightly different formulation today, Australia will be Australia. China will be China. And that means, you know, we can park those differences or at least not allow those differences to overwhelm and derail the relationship. But it does mean those differences are still there. And it does mean uh, from time to time you get a one-sided press conference like today. Could you see uh, the shadow of Paul Keating looming at all over today's events? Look, I don't think it did overshadow today's events, but certainly there will be a tension on the meeting that Wang Yi is due to hold tomorrow with Paul Keating. And there's been plenty of commentary around all of this. And the former Prime Minister himself has been uh, quite critical of those criticising the fact that he's having this meeting. But I don't think that overshadowed uh, the various meetings that Wang Yi held here today. All right, let's go to the United States, where, as I think many people will already have seen or heard, that... Uh, Donald Trump criticised Kevin Rudd. Now, I'm not entirely sure that Donald Trump knew who he was talking about, asking a question from Nigel Farage, but um, I'll play the grab and then tell us what you think about it. I heard he was a little bit nasty. Uh, I hear he's not the brightest bulb, uh, but I don't know much about him. But if, uh, if he's at all hostile, he will not be there long. So there is a sense of deja vu, I think, in, uh, in Donald Trump dropping a grenade and everyone trying to, scrambling to work out what it all means. It certainly means some awkwardness for Ambassador Kevin Rudd right now. On your point, I mean, he said twice there, Donald Trump, that he doesn't know much about Kevin Rudd. Well, that's either a sign that he's not paying a lot of attention to this particular relationship uh, or he's trying to belittle the former Prime Minister, perhaps uh, a bit of both. Um, but we know that Donald Trump does not react well to criticism and this was always a potential risk in appointing Kevin Rudd as ambassador. He had been quite critical before his appointment of, of Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he, he labelled him back when he was um, a very active social media user, Kevin Rudd. He labelled Donald Trump the most destructive president in history. He said he drags America and democracy through the mud. Donald Trump is vindictive. We know he wants to seek retribution against various enemies. He said this if he gets back to the White House. Uh, so it's no surprise that he reacted in that way in relation to Kevin Rudd. Look, it, it, this does need to be treated somewhat seriously. It, it could turn out to be bluster or storm in the teacup. It's often difficult to know with Donald Trump, but it, it clearly is being treated seriously. We've seen the Prime Minister, the Foreign Minister all responding to this today. Trump is ahead of Joe Biden in uh, many of the polls. It's tight, but he could return to the White House. 
This raises the question what it means for the relationship, what it means for AUKUS. It would have been nice to see Donald Trump asked for his views on AUKUS today. Mm. That's still a bit of an unknown. Uh, but as I say, it may not mean much in the end other than uh, this awkwardness for Kevin Rudd. He's been trying to build ties with Republicans in Congress, but the Republican that really counts is Donald Trump. He has enormous control over the party. Uh, let's come back to uh, Canberra precisely. Uh, today, Albanese ruled out a parliamentary committee process to oversee the government's religious discrimination bill. David, why yeah. is this issue back again? Well, it's back because, Sarah, Anthony Albanese before the election promised to achieve what Scott Morrison couldn't on this and introduce a religious discrimination act. Uh, to protect people of faith against vilification, while also dealing with the issue of LGBTQI plus staff and students in religious schools through amendments to the Sex Discrimination Act. Tomorrow, the final report of the Australian Law Reform Commission is due to be tabled. It must be tabled. The government had asked it uh, to go off and find a solution to all of this. So getting ahead of that, the Prime Minister is now saying he'll only proceed if there's bipartisanship. He doesn't want to stoke big community division over this. Peter Dutton calls it a broken promise, but there are divisions on the Liberal side as well. I suspect Anthony Albanese is reluctant to repeat what we saw last year on the Indigenous Voice, months of community division culminating in a no vote. He proceeded on that without bipartisan support. You can see why he might be reluctant to play that game again. Uh, but I suspect Peter Dutton's not all that keen to um, pursue this either. Yes, he gave uh, Albanese a whack for a broken promise, but he won't say what he thinks should be done on religious discrimination. He prides himself on delivering unity in the Liberal Party, and this issue is still quite divisive amongst Liberals. David, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Sarah.